Roger, hammer three. Eject, eject, eject. It's definitely a violent procedure. An inside look into a fighter jet ejection. These are the actual rockets, yeah. These are them. This is a fully armed seat right now. <laughs> Sergeant Joshua Hayes is an ejection seat mechanic, and he gets the gravity of his job. The seat has to work every time, 100% of the time. I need the, uh, that small wrench. He takes us through exactly what happens when the lever is pulled. Eject, eject, eject. First, the glass canopy flies off. These sears are going to blow two cads. Setting off a sequence of events, the crew members' legs cinched in with these straps. So that their legs won't hit the front of the, uh, front of the cockpit as they come up out of the aircraft. The seat launched up these guide rails. It's going to leave the aircraft somewhere in the vicinity of about a half a second. That's when these rocket motors on the bottom will kick in. Those will propel him again for about another 200 feet and within about a second, second and a half. The pilot will experience about 12 to 14 G's, probably blacking him out. That's when this drogue chute deploys to slow the seat down so the parachute can open at a safe speed. And the seat will fall away. All of this happening in less than four seconds. Every two years or 728 days, each seat is removed, cleaned, and examined. Brace water and pack. Every four years, pilots go through aviation survival training. And up. What you do wrong? Good times. Without some kind of preparation as to what you're going to do in the water, if you have a mishap, you have no way of sort of logically working through. This is an actual float that's located in the under part of the seat. It inflates automatically upon ejection, and these pilots are practicing with it right now. The kit they're sitting on weighs about 40 pounds. It's got medical kits, it's got water, blankets, things like that for their survival. There we go. It's training that saves lives. Right before I pulled the handle, I remember thinking, I cannot believe this is happening. I remember saying, oh God. On Friday, January 17th, 2003, then Captain Matt Shortle was on a maintenance flight about 86 miles off the coast of San Diego. He faced a total electrical failure, his F-18 falling about 30,000 feet a minute. I saw white caps on the waves and uh, it really scared me. He pulled the lever. Next thing I know, smoke, flames are coming up and then I'm going for the ride of my life. Uh, as a pilot, I'm used to flying about negative three to plus eight Gs is what we did in the Blue Angels. But here, I'm getting an almost double that and it was just a lot of forces on my body and then finally about halfway up I got knocked out. He landed in the water and was rescued a short time later without breaking bones, which happens to some. We actually went out sideways, so the envelope of survivability was very low, so I feel very fortunate. He, like every other pilot who's ejected, is now shorter, the force compressing his spine. I used to be 6'4", now I'm 5'10". Just kidding. Uh, no, I'm probably a quarter inch shorter now. He's also got something else. If you do eject, you become part of a new club, and it's the Martin Baker Ejection Tie Club. It's this tie from the maker of the seat. It's a, a pretty exclusive group, not that you really want to join it. Shackles are you off. For those who work with ejection seat and those who depend on them, the goal is clear, saving lives. It's a great feeling when the pilot can walk in the next day and uh, thank you for the fact that his seat worked. At MCAS Miramar, Erica Fox, Fox 5 News. Erica Fox takes us to the park for why they want the hometown favorite to take the American Idol crown. The SeaWorld creatures are all abuzz over hometown Idol favorite Jessica Sanchez. The dolphins flipping over her and crooning their support. Penny, what do you think of Jessica Sanchez? Oh, you're excited. The penguins can't get enough trying to keep up with her powerful vocals. Clyde imitating her rolling on the river moves, and boy, does this sea lion have a lot to say. Clyde, I heard that you are a big Jessica Sanchez fan. What do you like about Jessica Sanchez? <laughs> Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. Some people think Jennifer Lopez is really, really hot. What do you think of Jennifer Lopez? Beluga 
little whales, also known as sea canaries, harmonizing over the teen's talent. <laughs> Twirling, even moonwalking. Do you think Jessica Sanchez is going to win? What about Philip Phillips? Do you think he has a shot? And waving bye bye to all the other contestants. Now, what message would you like to give to me to give to Jessica Sanchez? What message would you like to give? Ah, oh, kisses, lots of kisses. Mwah. Thank you. You are the best kisser around. Everybody in San Diego needs to listen to me now. Vote for Jessica Sanchez. With the SeaWorld animals cheering on Jessica, Erica Fox, Fox 5 News. Hey folks, how are you? Welcome to Tiger Tiger. No? You want to keep the tab open? Yeah. Steak solo, the handmade bratwurst. Just so you know, our menus are right here on the on the column. We order everything at the bar. Locally brewed beer. A scratch kitchen. Tiger Tiger. A pub on El Cajon Boulevard opened its doors just last October. And with the line waiting out the door, it's easy to see Tiger Tiger's instant popularity. And we'll have those beers ready for you here in just a second. The crowds have been great. People are constantly coming in. We get new people every single night, which is crazy. Along with a vast beer menu. You'll have to put this on my side. 30 brews on tap. No, I just, I just. <laughs> Tiger Tiger has an extreme food menu as well. For the biscuits and gravy on Sunday morning. Chef Baccalini. Here we come every Friday and Sunday morning. Yeah, we put a bunch of slaws up, please. Cool organic food, uh, great place to hang out. I think we made the right decision today. And some come for the beer. Great beer. Culture IPA and a steak yeah. Yeah. But most come for a little of both. It's flat iron steak sandwich. Wow. Both the beer and the food are amazing. We're really rooting for more people like us to, to move in the neighborhood and take advantage of that. They say people aren't used to being able to eat out on El Cajon Boulevard, but they hope a pint to beer. All right, order in and fire a ham and cheese sandwich. And some good food. That's two all day, chef. We'll okay. bring people back. <laughs> drink, do best. drink beer. <laughs> Meet the Amphibious Transport Dock USS San Diego. It's pretty exciting. The town is opening them, is receiving us with open arms, and the same as we are, anxious to be here. The vessel, built from the ground up over the last few years in Mississippi, where it conducted sea trials, still has that new ship smell. Being aboard this ship, a brand new ship, the first one out here in San Diego, it's it's a great lifetime experience. And everywhere you look, there are nods to the city for which the vessel is named and where it will call home. Street signs in the hallways like Harbor Drive, the gas lamp cafeteria, serving up fresh food, even the Padres and Chargers get a shout out. Seeing the, the same street signs as you, you know, cruise around the town, uh, it, it's very cool to, uh, to see that personality on board. Its main duty, transporting Marines and sailors. This is actually the fourth ship to bear the name USS San Diego. Ours was a strictly an offensive fighting ship. Will Templeton served as a signal officer on the second USS San Diego during World War II. It was a cruise light anti-aircraft specialized for shooting down enemy airplanes. Commissioned in 1942 and put out of commission four years later. Templeton learned why as the ship headed into San Diego for a huge party, celebrating the end of the war and USS San Diego. We heard a swoosh, and I said, what was that? And somebody said, it was a plane going over us, and somebody added, it's a jet. I'd never heard of a jet before that time, October 26, 1945. But that jet put us out of commission. was just too fast. The jet just doubled the speed of, of aircraft and our ship wasn't uh, designed for that. Templeton plans to be at the May 19th commissioning of the new USS San Diego and he has high hopes for the ship. I hope that they were 
they end up as a team the way our 600 guys did. The ship's crest includes elements of the city's crest. In fact, they both contain the same shape. They both have this Spanish ship right here. These four stars represent the four USS San Diego ships. And at the bottom right there, Semper Vigilance is the city's motto. It means ever vigilant. Bearing the ship's name, uh, the city's name for the ship, it's going to be a great task to be in Port San Diego and take care of the city as, as best as we can, take care of our nation. Aboard USS San Diego in San Diego, Erica Fox, Fox 5 News.